So I have a new to me book, somebody recommended it to me and I thought, oh, that sounds lovely. And then in just a second, I'll read you the subtitle. And I was a little reluctant to purchase it just because it seems like there's enough uh, to contemplate these days. But uh, I'm glad I did because the book is written by a man who's a Zen Buddhist and uh, a hospice worker. And after having been in traditional hospice, he formed a Zen Buddhist hospice out near California. And I just thought that that's incredibly interesting to me. So let me get the book. It's entitled The Five Invitations, Discovering What Death Can Teach Us About Living Fully. And in this particular chapter that I'm reading from, uh, he's talking about welcoming everything and pushing nothing away. And that is a huge philosophical part of this practice, that if I bump up against tightness in my, let me make it up, left hip, uh, the resistance I feel to that, the pushing against that is what causes me to suffer. It's only when I can back up, not have a reaction, but observe that I can then be responsive. And I always say when I uh, read anything like this, oh yeah, I'm down with that until, until it's me and things aren't going the way I want them to go. So, uh, you know, this is part of our human condition. I started reading last night, the next chapter where he's talking about another very, very Buddhist concept, which is to lean into what's uncomfortable. And we see that a lot. Well, we used to pre-COVID, people would come in and we would ask them, oh, tell me a little bit about your body. And they would say, oh, I have a problem with my right ankle, but I know how to avoid it. And I'm sure Michelle was like me. We think in the back of our minds, avoiding it will just make it worse. So we learn to work with what's, what's uncomfortable. So anyway, uh, welcome everything, push nothing away. My daughter, Gina, and I, like to shop in consignment stores for vintage clothing. There are great finds in such shops, a silk paisley scarf, a retro leather jacket, sequined heels. While Gina tries on outfits, I peruse the racks for the next cool item. Many of the clothes have a small stain, a missing button, or a slight tear in the fabric. I noticed in one store, all of the clothes carried a cardboard tag with the price and the disclaimer as is. I like these tags. I think we should hang them on ourselves and each other like Christmas tree ornaments. What a beautiful gift to accept ourselves, others, and our circumstances as is with all the beauty, imperfections, and challenges that make up this very human life of ours. To welcome everything and push away nothing is an invitation to discover a deeper dimension of our humanity, to tap into something beyond our habitual selves. We gain access to some part of us that includes, but is not driven by, our reactivity. Welcome everything, push away nothing, is neither a foolish nor an idealistic invitation. On the contrary, it is eminently practical. Accepting life as is means that we make peace with things as they are, rather than trying to force them to be the way we want them to be and getting frustrated that we can't. Instead of spinning a story that we then try to live into, we open to the way things are and accept that we are completely human. All right, I think we could probably work on this till the last day, <laughs> till the last breath. Uh, accepting things as they are. 
the yogis say that uh, our entire life is spent trying to either avoid what we don't want or get what we want, as opposed to just accepting life uh, on life's terms. So it's uh, just, just one more aspect to this practice, the philosophical aspect that you can uh, certainly noodle around or reject or try to uh, incorporate into your practice, whatever, whatever feels right to you this morning. So let's just sit together for a moment. Uh, I've been a big fan of putting the block in the lap and the backs of the hands on the blocks to try to help get rid of some of that tension that tends to gather at the base of the neck when we sit this way. Once you've softly closed your eyes, I'm gonna ask you to immediately notice the tip of each elbow. What? Yep, the tip of each elbow. It is the focal point, the anatomical focus of our practice this morning. Is one elbow tip fuzzier or clearer than the other? And are the elbows really, are they really underneath the shoulders? And if you back them up so that they are, they almost graze or touch your rib cage. And can you gently, very gently, pull the tips of the elbows down? And then just pause. The elbows are halfway between your wrists and your upper arm bone called your humerus. And so it's this midway point that we'll focus on this morning. Most of the practice uh, will be about the neck and shoulders. And so when you're ready, everyone, press the elbow tips down again toward the mat, gather the hands and drag the elbows backward until the hands come to the chest. And then take the thumb tips and hook them anywhere on your breastbone. And once hooked, nudge the breastbone a little bit higher so it feels like it moves up into the collarbones. Now you may, let's do that again, nudge the breastbone higher, see if you can feel the shoulder blades push against the back when you do that. And just let the head, it, I don't even want to say drop because it's really not a, a bow. It's almost like a, a very discreet nod. When you're ready, everybody, take the hands apart, heavy the tailbone, and lift the head. So when we come and lie down on our side, I'm just crawling to get a little bit closer to you all the better to see you with, my dears. When, <laughs> when you lie down on your side, uh, you have to make up the distance between your head and your shoulder, or else when you lie down, you'll be all cockeyed with your head and your spine. So I'm suggesting that you take your blanket and that you fold it in half and put it between your left shoulder and your head. Hey, Peter. <laughs> Good to see you, man and that you come and lie down everybody on your left side. Now, once you lie down on your left side, go ahead and bend the knees to a 90 degree angle. And what that will mean is that your knees are aligned with your right hip, yes, and the heels are aligned with the backs of your knees. They call this a 90-90 angle. And can you begin to trace everyone the left side of your body? Let's start at the left ear. Can you feel it? I hope so. And then the left shoulder. And then the left ribs. Notice the outer left hip. And notice 
the outer left ankle. That one can be a little uh, fuzzy. Sometimes when I look out, uh, people's feet aren't completely against the floor. I wouldn't try to force it. I would just notice if you can feel your outer left ankle. Now the right hand, we're gonna start with a very familiar move that I teach a lot. You're just gonna put the hand in front of your chest and slide your right arm forward until you feel your nose turn toward the floor and your right knee slide just a little bit forward of your left knee. And then pull your hand back to where you started. So all of you should have great success with this. Let's do it two more times. The right hand slides forward. The nose, the eyes, the head turn to the left and the right knee just pushes forward a little bit of the left knee. And then come back to the beginning. And the third time, see if you can pay enough attention to your breath that when you begin to stop being conscious of the breath, you stop. And then pull the right arm back. So that tends to slow us down with our movement. If we, if we ask ourselves, can I feel my breath still? Am I aware of it? From here, everybody, take the right arm and uh, place it against your right side and let your fingers just drip off your right hip for a second. Now I'm gonna ask you to use uh, an image. Imagine that I put a string at the very tip of your right ear lobe and I'm somehow able to tape it or Velcro it to the top of your right shoulder. So your right ear lobe via a string is connected to your right shoulder. Slide your right hand toward the front of your yoga mat and then pull the right shoulder up toward the right ear lobe. Slide the arm away, pull the shoulder back up toward the earlobe. Now this time, the third time, you're gonna be a little bit more assertive. As you slide the right hand away, keep lengthening it and let the head get pulled up and off the blanket, like a half an inch, like it's so small. I might not be able to see the four of you that have your video on. And then slide the shoulder back toward the earlobe to lower the head. Now that's where it gets dicey, everybody, because we're very habituated to moving the head and the neck without the use of the shoulder. So try it one more time for me. Slide the right arm away from the head. Let that pull with the head, small, small. And then pull the right shoulder blade up toward the ear and lower the head. And just lie there for a moment. See if you have any more connectivity with the left side of your body. And then from here, take the right arm up toward the ceiling, half-heartedly, like eh. Take the right leg up toward the ceiling and let the right leg and the right arm start to pull you onto your back. Now you're gonna have to fuss with your little head support. I have to sit up to do this with you on the other side. So get over to your right side, 90-90 with your legs and just hang for a second. And notice, trace everybody, the outside of your uh, body on the right. So let's start at the ankle. Can I feel my right outer ankle? Do I have any contact with the outer right knee? Is there an awareness of the right side of my rib cage? How many ribs actually touch the floor? There are 12 of them. And then how about the right ear? And if you were to look at yourself from behind, would the back of your skull be aligned with your waistband? We had someone here yesterday who was actually taking her hands back to her head and her waistband to try to figure out if they were aligned with each other. So first, first movement is one that's familiar. Take your left hand, everyone, out in front. Slide the hand as far forward as you comfortably and easily can letting the head turn to the right, letting the left knee slide forward, and then pull the hand back. And so as you practice this two more times, you guys are great at remembering you're not trying to do more each time. That would imply that more is better, which it's not in the yoga. 
see if you can notice when do I go too far as evidenced by a disconnect with my breath and then come back. Once you come back, just lift the left arm and let it dangle onto the left side of your body. Your fingers kind of hang off your hip. Let's go back to that little piece of string that goes from the top of your left shoulder all the way to your left earlobe. And as you let the left arm slide to the front of the mat, Imagine that the head gets pulled tiny bit, but then imagine you just can't drop your head. You actually have to pull your left shoulder up towards your left ear to lower your head. So let's do this one two more times. Left arm slides, slides, slides forward. The head lifts a little bit. The left arm comes back. So move from the arm to lower the head. We only did it one time on the other side. So why don't you do the next two without lifting the arm. Just see, how tight is this side of my neck? And the other big thing to pay attention to everybody is, is your shoulder blade, which is called your scapula, is it moving? Can you feel it drag down your back when the arm moves away? Can you feel it move up towards your ear when the arm comes towards your head? And then just hang out for a second. So if you can't feel the shoulder blade, it doesn't necessarily mean it's not moving, but it might explain to some degree why your neck is stiff, if it is stiff. All right, so left arm comes up half-heartedly, left leg comes up. I've got you going a lot from side to side. So let's do this, roll to your back and adjust the headrest and just be on your back for a minute because I want you to feel how when that blanket or towel, whatever you happen happen to be using is doubled up like this, your head is jacked forward. So this is never a good position. For some people, they might say it feels good, but it actually has our neck and our spine out of alignment with each other. So take your time rolling over to the left side again. I'm gonna sit up and do it. As you get over to the left side, please, please, please uh, align the knees with the pelvis and align the heels with the backs of the knees. Awesome. Now, this is really the crux of our lesson this morning. Take your right hand to your right lowest ribs. And I'm going to get close so everybody can see me. Your hand is literally, the heel of your hand is on your rib cage. That's it. And the fingers in my body, they're pointing in the same direction as where my belly button is. Okay, cool. Now, you have to go slow when you're trying to figure out these important connections in the body. If you've been in class already this week, uh, this has been my, my teaching theme, so you might already know, which means you'll go a little faster than everyone else, but, but don't go too fast. Feel like, you know, a lot of you know I have this little puppy, and uh, he's in this stage where he puts everything in his mouth. So imagine your right elbow is in his little mouth, and he's pulling your right elbow backward. Now, as he pulls, feel how, I hope, your head, your neck, turn a little bit to the right. And then take your right elbow, imagine you extract it from his mouth, and you move your right elbow toward the floor, towards your, where your knees are, and see if your head and your neck start to turn toward the floor. So let's do that two more times. The right elbow, when pulled backward, We'll also turn the right side of the chest, pull the head, pull the neck, and the eyes probably uh, started to turn as well. When you pull your right elbow forward and to the left, the head and the eyes turn. Now do one more. What I notice that's different than when I just use my arm is that I feel my rib cage more because my right hand is on my right ribs. But as I rock forward and backward, the left side of my rib cage becomes clearer to me. That just is my observation. You might have a totally different one. Take the right arm, everyone, up toward the ceiling half-heartedly. And then begin to move the right arm toward the right hip. Now, can you bend the elbow a little bit as you circle this right arm out in front of your face? I'd like you to look at the heel of the hand and follow the heel of the hand with your eyes, your head, and your neck as it goes behind. 
behind you, down toward the right hip, out in front. There's an interesting point where we just disconnect from the hand. Sort of like when you're listening to somebody you're really familiar with and you just click out for a second and they're like, are you listening? You're like, no, no, I was listening, I was listening. Keep watching the hand. Now pause and please go in the opposite direction. And as you go in the opposite direction, you're all incredibly proficient at this. Where's the stickiest part of the shoulder and neck? And can you just slow the roll as you get to the sticky part? And again, when do I lose the connection with my breath? Now, eventually, everyone, let the right arm linger along the right side of your head. This is foreshadowing to where we're going to be in about 20 minutes. Bend the right elbow just a little bit. And as you do, lengthen the right leg toward the front of the yoga mat. Yeah. So as you do this, try to imagine if, if it's if the pose name isn't clear to you, that's cool. You'll see it in a little while. Those of you that know the, the poses a little bit more, can you see side angle here? As you push out through the heel of the right foot, notice how the left ribs tend to lift away from the floor. Can you press those left ribs down, reach the right arm, and then bend the elbow and let the right elbow pulling backward turn the chest toward the ceiling? Uh huh. Now let the right toes go toward the ceiling and just flop onto your back. You're going to be all like, <laughs> you know, messed up. Your head's going to come off the blanket. You're going to be a little crooked, but that's okay. Stay there for a second. Left foot on the floor, right toes toward the ceiling. So you just rolled over from uh, your elbow, which was cool. And then take your time, roll to the other side. And once you get on to the other side, 90, 90, the legs, please. Not sure if you're supposed to use that as a verb, but I did. And left hand on the left side of the rib cage, palm flat, everybody. So let's do the opposite order first. Take the left elbow and move it to the right. Does my body understand that my head should follow that movement because it's connected to my shoulder blade and my collarbone? The left elbow moves back. Do I feel my body's weight move backward in space? Do I feel myself get heavier on the right side of my body? And so two more times, there's this really sort of sweet, it feels like to me, rocking motion where I don't really have to do a whole lot. I can just let the body be pulled by the movement of the left elbow. And in that moment, I can accept things as they are. <laughs> left elbow moves forward. And then the left elbow moves back. And just pause. Which way do you like to go more? A lot of times people either like the internal movement of the shoulder or the external movement a little better. Now just hang here, everybody. That's it. Did we do the big circle on the side, Rick and Rose? Not yet. That's what I thought. Okay, so left arm's going to come up. Now, can you bend the elbow, pull the left elbow back, and let the head turn to see the hand? And circle two times around, everyone in a clockwise direction, trying to keep contact with the eyes and the hand, circling behind you. And then change direction. You know, it's a funny thing. I was thinking about this uh, on the way here this morning, that human movement, when we do it slowly and deliberately, let's switch directions, is not that complex until there's an injury or a limitation. And so if you come across the part that's sticky, maybe because of a, I don't know, a shoulder surgery, uh, a chronic neck condition, just work your way through that a little bit more easily, everybody. And then just pause and let yourself be pulled by the bending of the left elbow back a little bit so that you can straighten the left leg and project the left arm alongside the head. So one of, I think, the hardest things to learn in our yoga practice is not to harden the joints. Oh my gosh, so let your 
elbow be a little more relaxed, your wrist a little bit more relaxed. And then notice how much did the right side of my rib cage come off the floor? Push the right ribs down, push through the left heel, lengthen from the shoulder to the fingers, and then bend the elbow more, start to pull left elbow back. You're rolling, you're rolling, you're rolling onto your back. Adjust the headrest and lie here, everybody. By adjust, let me clarify, that means to open up your blanket or your towel so that your head is not being jammed forward. Be right as you are, the right knee bent, the left knee bent. And then bend the left knee, sorry, you had your left leg long, and pigeon toe your feet. So your big toes are turned in toward one another. Your inner thighs just rotated in toward each other. Now from there, make your feet parallel to one another and drop your knees wide. I don't care if the bottoms of your feet come together or not. This is an external rotation. So our shoulders and our hips can both, all four of those joints can internally and externally rotate. So let's work with the hips a little bit more. Drag the knees together, feet are parallel, slide the heels apart, knees drop into one another. Make the feet parallel, drop the knees wide, inner thighs just spun or moved away from each other. Bring the legs back toward each other, feet about hip width apart, and take your arms, everyone, out to a big T position. In the yoga studio, I'm butted up against this wall on my left arm, but uh, I'd like both of your arms to be in line with your shoulders. Everybody turn and just look, because sometimes the brain thinks we do what we imagine ourselves to do. Is my right hand aligned with my right shoulder? Is my left palm aligned with my left shoulder? And then walk your feet a little bit wider apart. So these days, I, I'm really fascinated with these instructions of a little wider till it's comfortable, because I'm trying to remind us all that we're not forcing ourselves into a yoga pose. We're trying to find the place where it's easy enough that our breath can accompany us as we move. So with that said, wait for an exhalation. And when the breath leaves the body on the exhale, tilt the knees to the right and turn the right palm down. Turn the head, everybody, to look at the left palm. And then feel like you're heavy to the right. That's cool. But can you, or and, can you use the heel of your right hand, push it down and feel like you're moving the floor, you're shoving the floor with your right hand so that you can press a little bit more weight onto your left shoulder. Hang on everybody at home, let me check with my peeps here. Did that make sense to you guys? Okay, good. So as you roll back onto your backside, try not to sling the knees, but rather pull the core in, roll onto the left buttock, pause. As you go to the left, the right palm turns up, the left palm turns down. And the head's gonna turn to glance toward the right hand. And you just hang out for a second. Now go ahead and come back, rolling onto the buttock, pausing, taking the right leg long. And so now it gets a little confusing. Make sure the palm is face up. As you take the left knee to the right, turn the right palm down, turn the head to the left. Now lie here for a second. For some of you, these words are just gonna kind of ping pong and that's cool. They won't make a lot of sense because you just might not understand uh, internal and external rotation or maybe you've never thought about it. The left leg is internally rotated. The right leg is externally rotated. The right shoulder is internally rotated the left shoulder is externally rotated. So opposite body parts are doing opposite rotations. And if that makes your brain fuzzy, awesome, you're learning, you're so learning. So roll back. I believe that uh, confusion is the companion to learning. So go ahead and bend the right knee, pause. Take the left leg long, tilt the legs to the left. The left palm comes down, the right palm turns up. Somebody said to me the other day, I didn't understand the words you said, but I felt better afterwards. Awesome. So can you say to yourself, which leg's turning out? And turning out from where? The midline of your body. 
with shoulders turning out. And then you roll back slowly, everyone. Both palms come up, rebend the left knee, lower the arms down close to your sides, and close your eyes. And just feel your breath. One of the tools we use in the yoga practice to help us whenever we feel resistance to things as they are is the breath. And you know, it's such a simple exercise. Before you start your car, you take a breath, you notice your breath. Before you lock the car, you notice the breath. Press the middle of the back down, pick up the feet, grab behind the knees and come to an easy version of happy baby. So just hold your hands behind your knees or you can even hold the backs of your thighs, let your elbows be on the floor because your elbow tips are the big uh, learning this morning. Push the tips of the elbows down and stream the right leg to the ceiling. Now notice if you harden to the right ankle and then stream the left leg toward the ceiling. That's it. Can you draw the toes a little bit towards your ankles, but not, you know, not aggressively. And then can you drag the two legs together and turn all 10 toes away from each other or turn the right toes and the left toes away from each other? Yeah, so there's the external rotation. Then turn the big toes in toward one another. The heels slide wide. There's the internal rotation. Okay, cool. Now just turn the feet so the palms, so the soles of your feet are parallel to the ceiling. Bend the knees. That's it. And do the same with your hands. Once you put your feet down, take your arms up toward the ceiling, everybody. Gather your two hands. That's it. Now from here, Turn the palms toward the front of the yoga mat, internal rotation of the shoulders. Bring the palms back to touch each other. And then turn the thumbs toward the back of the yoga mat as you separate the hands, external rotation. And then back together. Let's just lower the arms, pick a side to roll to everybody. And once you do that, come on up to all fours. We need to do a little bit more for your hamstrings. So, uh, put your blanket off to the side, come and stand and make your way up everybody to the top of the mat. Now, <laughs> I don't know about you, but my hamstrings have been tight all week. So come to the top of the mat. Might as well put the blocks on their highest height. Why not? Come in to check on you guys that have on your video. That's it, blocks at the very top of the yoga mat. Come and stand with the feet hip width apart. So uh, you guys ever see like video on Animal Planet where they're like, I saw one recently where they were highlighting bears, bears in Montana to be specific. And they have these webcams that, you know, they put out in the forest. And when the bear comes up to the webcam, you see his big snout. That's what I feel like every time I walk up to the, to the device. So as, <laughs> as you come forward, here's what's important. Your head drops and it feels like you've got a tail. I mean, a long tail, like a dinosaur's tail, a lizard's tail if you live in Florida. And that lizard dinosaur tail is so long and heavy, it's going backwards toward the back of the yoga mat. And the neck is so willing to let go of this week's tension. <laughs> Good for you, Rick. That it feels like water would drop off the crown of your head toward the floor and you'd have a little puddle there. All right, now what are the legs doing? Take a look at them. Can you lift your toes? Pull up on your kneecaps, everybody. Feel like you're trying to drag your kneecaps up to your pelvis. And those of you that have a lot of flexibility, hold on, that would be Michelle. <laughs> you could take the backs of your hands, Michelle, to the blocks. You could lower yours or get rid of yours. But don't force it, you guys. It takes so long for hamstrings to, to let go. Put the toes back down if you haven't already. And see if you can just be here accepting whatever degree of tightness there is. I was thinking about this the other day. If the hamstrings just are screaming, like you can't think about anything else, let off a little bit and bend the knees. God, Rick, that looks awesome, man. Now from here, everybody, just to torture the yoga students more, uh, slowly walk back to down dog. And if you noticed at home, I changed my blocks from their highest level to a lower level. 
And see this morning, can you get the heels onto the mat? So you'll just have to walk forward some. Yeah, that looks awesome. Joyce and Peter as well. Okay, cool. And then Trisha, really try to broaden between the shoulder blades. Trisha, broaden between the shoulder blades and let your head go, girlfriend. Awesome. And then let's see, Michelle, push back a tiny bit with the tops of the thigh bones. That a girl. Awesome. I miss you guys at home. I miss you. I love you, everybody. <laughs> That's it. It's like seeing your kids. It's like, there are my cubs. There they are. So from here, everybody, try to keep the head low. Bend the elbows, not to the sides of the yoga mat. Drop the elbows toward the uh, mat straight down. And then walk one foot forward, walk the other foot forward and keep coming. There is a moment when your head will yank, when it feels like somebody grabbed you by the scruff of your neck. That's when you have to really work hard at raising the blocks and relaxing the neck. And then from here, everyone, go ahead and turn and face the long edge of your yoga mat. Those of you that are saying to yourselves, my God, my hamstrings are tight, bring a block along. Now I'd like to set up really specifically this morning, take your legs wide enough, everybody can do it in this class, that when you raise your hands, your hands are over your ankle or over some part of your foot. It's big, it's probably almost four feet. Then put the hands on the hips and get back in touch with your elbows. So pull the elbows in the same direction that your heels are facing behind you. Can you feel how that broadens your chest? And good. And then take the elbows forward and see how that broadens the back. Now we need to do this really slowly the next time. As the elbows move back, can you feel that the weight goes into the heels of the feet more? As the elbows go forward, can you feel how weight gets dragged into the toes a little bit? Hold on, I'm not getting any response from my studio audience. Okay, good. From here, everybody, angry cat, your back. What does that mean? Hunch it, hunch it, hunch it, hunch it. And as you hunch it, pull the elbows forward. Let the elbows help you come into the pose. Now the hands can go to the block and the block, I'll raise mine to its highest height. Yeah, there you go. Somebody in the studio is using two blocks. Once you get down, bend the right knee, pull the elbows apart. That broadens your collarbones, even if you don't feel it. Come back to both legs long, bend the left knee. Pull the right elbow toward the short edge of the mat. Pull the left elbow toward the short edge of the mat. Come back and just go from side to side. You can just uh, move in a way that feels comfortable. Keep the elbows, good for you guys, the elbows bending. That's it, Trisha. Just make sure, especially for your neck, that your elbows bend. Yep, they're just going out to the side. You got it. Awesome, Joyce. Wow, Michelle Eifert, you rock, girlfriend. Michelle teaches on Tuesday nights at 545. That's it, everybody. Awesome. And then just pause. Just that's it, Peter. Slow things down. And ask yourself, can I just be with my breath here for two seconds? Accepting it is as it is in my body right now. Now, when you start to come up, everybody, elbows can be such helpers. Put the heels of the hands on the back of your waistband. Push the elbows backward and see if you can almost feel that the chest lifts. You feel it, Rick? Yeah, really cool. Awesome. Now, from here, go ahead and heel toe, heel toe your feet together. Let's just do a little bit of movement before we drill down in some of the postures with the elbows. So at least uh, the blocks at the very least should be on their medium height. Come and stand in mountain pose. On an inhalation, your inhalation, everyone, take the arms up toward the ceiling. As the arms move up toward the ceiling, now you get to ask yourself, what happens if I turn the tips of my elbows forward so my hands face backward? And then what happens if I turn my palms forward? So my elbows start to go backward a little bit. And all you're trying to do, let's go, let me be clear. 
you don't work for yoga. Yoga works for you. <laughs> this really, you're paying to have yoga work for you. So what feels better to my neck? And then wait for the exhale. And on the exhale, I'm gonna suggest you bend your elbows so that when you come forward, your neck isn't stiff. Let the head drop, let the heels get heavy. Bend the knees, everybody, big step, four feet, back with the right leg. That's it. Now from here, bend the elbows toward the sides of the yoga mat. And then flatten the hands, pull the left leg back to plank. You can do it, yes. Now from here, the shoulder blades come to play. Push the shoulder blades up to the ceiling. Push the inner heels back toward the back of the mat. And then bend the elbows an inch toward your thighs. Bend the knees three inches. Push the blocks forward as you glide the hips backward and come to down dog. And if the heels of the feet haven't touched the floor yet, it's cool, walk the feet forward. Once you walk the feet forward though, everybody look up at your elbows. And if they're hard, you've got to sharpen that a little bit, but you don't want to be rigid in the elbows. You know what, I said that wrong, I'm sorry. If the elbows are rigid, you've got to soften them. And if they're really bent, you have to sharpen them and reach through them more. Walk up to the top of the mat. Begin to bend the knees. Push the elbows backward and downward as you come all, yes, you guys, all the way up and then just lift the arms. So we're just doing things a little bit differently this morning. Do you prefer the palms to turn back? Do you prefer the palms to turn forward? Do you prefer the hands to face one another? As you fold forward, bend the elbows, come down to the ground with a soft neck. Fingertips to the blocks, big step back, everybody, left leg, go big, that's it. Now, once that left leg pushes back, last week we worked on the heel moves backward, the breastbone moves forward. The palms become flat and you go to plank and you push the front of the spine up to the ceiling between the shoulder blades. Bend the elbows an inch, bend the knees three inches, glide the outer hips back. Is the weight evenly distributed on the heels of your hands? Try to remember which foot you walked forward with last time and do the opposite one. Walk, walk, walk all the way up to the top of the mat. This time put the heels of the hands on the tops of the buttocks. Push the elbows backward to see if you can help the chest lift upward. Now pause. Take the hands off the butt, bring them out in front. That's it. Look up at the hands and turn the crease of the elbows toward the ceiling. And then heavy the heels stand all the way up and you're gonna keep moving. So fold forward again, elbows bend. Put the blocks forward and make your way to all fours. Once you get to all fours, look forward and extend the right leg long. Make the weight be on all five toes evenly and hunch your back like angry cat. As you hunch your back, begin to turn the right leg until the foot goes flat. You're still in this angry cat back though. And then bend the right elbow and start to pull the right elbow up to the ceiling and put it on the hip. Now just hang for a second. You need to make sure you feel balanced because if you don't feel balanced, you're gonna hold your breath. So maybe you have to move your left foot, maybe you have to move your right foot. So let's go back to working with the elbow. If you pull the right elbow backward, can you feel that turn your chest? Good. If you move the right elbow forward, can you feel that turn the chest to the floor? Now, okay, awesome. Studio audience is saying yes. That's Rose and Rick, by the way, it's the Rose and Rick show. Now, from here, one more time, but you gotta go super slow this time. As you pull the right elbow back, see if you can feel that the weight goes to the baby toe side of the right foot more. What do you think, you two? Got it, one yes, one a little bit. As the weight, sorry, as the right elbow goes forward, can you feel the weight get heavier on the right big toe? Yay. So pull the right elbow back. Take the right hand off the hip, but keep pulling the elbow backward. Can you see your right hand? And if so, 
start to lengthen it. Watch it though, watch it, watch it move alongside your head. Yes, now from there, pull the right elbow backwards some. Turn the chest from the elbow. Turn the head from the elbow, yes. That's it, and then just take the hand back to the hip. I wanna show you guys how to use the elbow to get out of the posture. Begin to pull the right elbow forward. You can feel it, the right knee starts to turn toward the floor. You keep pulling with the elbow, the elbow goes toward the ground. You bend the right knee, you lower the right hand and you pause. Yeah, so everybody just pause and watch for a second because this is what uh, happened in the yoga studio which is really common, really common. It takes a long time to get these uh, subtleties. So we started to turn from the right elbow but then the hand will quickly come to the ground and you're trying to avoid that everybody. Because if you whip around your chest, what's at risk is your lower back. So you have to be really mindful of that. So watch, it's right elbow turning my chest toward the floor. Keep turning, the elbow's doing the work as the knee bends, then the hand comes to the ground. So let's try it on the other side. You know, you'll probably do what I did, which is uh, not do that about a thousand times. And then one day it suddenly makes sense to you. Left leg long, you're looking forward, hunch the back, curl the tail, turn, turn, and let the left foot go flat. And then take the left hand to the left hip. That's it. So pull the left elbow back, press the left elbow forward. Thank you for doing that, Rick. I forgot to remind everybody to adjust the feet so that you feel even and balanced. One more time, turn. So you're always, you guys, asking yourselves, what is the change in the movement? How does it affect my feet, my shoulders, my head, my neck? Lift the left hand. And if you can see the palm, begin to lengthen it. And see if you can feel that when you lengthen in the arm alongside the head, the weight naturally pushes back into that left foot. Now bend the left elbow some. Good. Feel like somebody gets you by the left elbow. They tug you. They turn you. They pull you back. That's it. And then you might be able to lengthen the arm a little bit more. Now, am I holding my breath? If that's the starting point, the transition will be really hard. So re-bend the left elbow. The hand comes to the hip. Uh-huh. We're gonna try it. We're gonna pull the left elbow forward. Keep pulling the left elbow as the left knee bends, then let the left hand come to the floor. Yes, yeah, better you guys at home, that was cool. So from here, grab your block, put it on its medium height, drop back toward child's pose and let your forehead rest on the block. Now the elbows at this point, everybody are pretty much just down on the ground, parallel to one another. But what do your knees feel like? I'm looking in the yoga studio and their, their legs are parallel to each other. Slide the knees wider. That's the external rotation. Maybe your body likes that. Maybe it doesn't. So you, you keep playing with it. You're like, ah, where do I wanna put my knees? And sometimes, you know, one knee goes out further than the other. Awesome. Can you make your tailbone heavy? Yes. And can you begin to lift your breastbone as you push your feet down? That's it, Rick. Push the feet down, lift the chest. Come up slowly, everybody. That's it. Put uh, one block on its highest height at the top left side of your yoga mat, top left high. Take your second block, put it 14 inches behind that one and come and stand. <clears throat> Bring your uh, left foot to the block that's a little farther back and step back with your right leg. Awesome. All right, cool. Right hand on the hip. Take the left arm up. Good. Feel like somebody's pulling you by your right elbow. And yeah, good for you, Rick. That'll pull the weight backward. Now you have to come sideways, but it's as if someone is continuing to pull that right elbow backward. So can I go to triangle pose? 
fingers to the block and still feel like my right elbow is moving to the back of my mat. Now, not as only as the elbow moving toward the back of the mat, it's moving in the same direction as your butt. Pull the right elbow backwards, see if the head and the chest can turn. And just pause. Just pause. And then pull the right elbow forward. Can you feel how that turns the chest? It's almost like you're thinking of coming out of the pose. You turn to look at your left big toe. Pull the right elbow back. Good. Bend the left knee. Reach for the second block. Step up with the right leg. Step up, step up. You can do it. That's it. Now you got to pull that right elbow back. Pull the right elbow back a little bit more. Yes. And then bend the left knee. Aim the right heel toward the back of the mat. Now pause. You've got a left knee that's bent. Put your left hand on the first, the second block. Yes. So your right foot's on the floor. Right foot's on the floor. That's it. And then begin to lift this right arm like you're taking an oath. Uh-huh. Feel like the right elbow pulls you back. Watch the hand as it comes alongside the head. You did this on your side. Yes. Now push the left elbow against the left arm. Pull the right elbow backward a little bit. You have to bend it to make that happen. That's it, Rick. Good. Take the right arm up toward the ceiling. Poke the fingers of the right hand up toward the ceiling as you stand up. Yes. Make your feet parallel. Put your hands on your hips. Everybody close your eyes. So when did the breath get uh, bullied? <laughs> At the beginning, Rick just said. So you just stand. And you close your eyes and you try to relax what feels a little bit too tense, a little bit too tight. Feel like that heavy dinosaur lizard tail is pulling your tailbone down so that your breastbone can lift up. Pull the elbows back a little bit. That'll put weight into your heels. And then bend the knees, open the eyes, everybody. If you can easily do it, reach over, get your blocks. Turn your right leg out and put one block at the top of the mat. And then the second block, 14 inches behind that one. And your right foot is by that block. So you're going to practice on your right side, you guys. <clears throat> there you go. Awesome. So the left hand is on the left hip. And it feels like somebody's dragging your left elbow backward. Your right arm comes up. Uh-huh. As you come sideways, do it against the left elbow being pulled backward. Yes. And you guys know how it goes. Rarely are the two sides the same. So let's take side angle first. Bend the front knee. As you bend the front knee, move the left elbow back. Let the head turn. And then look up at the left arm. It's like you're taking the oath of office. Slide the left arm alongside the head. Uh huh. If it'll go, if you can watch the hand, do it. I'm coming for the bear cam. That's it, Joyce. I think you might be able to bend that knee a little bit more, girlfriend. Uh huh. Yeah, it looks beautiful, Michelle. Everybody keep rolling weight to the baby toe side of the left foot. Yes. And then start to slowly straighten the right leg. Take the left hand back to the hip. Good. Now from there, wait, wait until you're like, <laughs> I like to say in your right mind, you know what I mean? It's like, okay, not holding my breath. I'm not anxious about my balance. Bend the front knee, reach for the first block and come up, whoa, or, or fall backward like I just did. Once you get up, can you feel that the pull of the left elbow pulls the left leg backward too? And then just pause. Can I feel my breath? If not, bend the front knee. Lower the back leg. That's it, pause. And then aim the left heel for the mat. Uh-huh. Take the right hand back to the first block. Come back to triangle. Take the left arm up to the ceiling. Lift everybody. Reach through the fingers to come up. Make the feet parallel. And heel, toe, heel, toe. The feet together. And just come and stand in mountain pose. Close the eyes. I can remember so many times, and it always seemed to happen on a Monday, you know, I'd go to my desk and I'd think, oh, I don't have that much to do. 
And by noon, it was like, oh my God, I'm, I'm drowning in all there is to do. And so the, the feeling can be very overwhelming. So we want to keep backing off in the yoga until the breath is present with us. And we don't you know, get overwhelmed. So let your eyes open when you're ready, everybody. And come and grab at least one blanket. If you've got more than one, that would be cool. If you have a block and you tend to be tight in the hamstrings, get your block. You can sit on the block. And come and sit in a posture called dandasana. It means stick or staff pose. And basically, the legs are long out in front of you. I actually think this is a really hard pose. <laughs> Peter, it's so cool. When you move away from the window, the sun looks like a sunburst coming in. And then when your head moves back in front of it, yeah, yeah, right? It's like the sun went away, right? They're up in Maine where it's very cold. So the fingers, everybody, are by the hips. And notice if your arms are straight, your elbows locked out, you tend to be rigid in the neck. So bend the elbows a little bit toward the sides of your mat. And then feel like I'm pulling them backward a little bit. Just see, you know, move your elbows around to affect the neck, to affect how this feels. And then ask yourself, how far would comfortably wide be with my legs? <laughs> you know, it could be like this. I'm teaching this delightful 91-year-old man. And really, comfortable for him is that. Take your block, everybody, and put it on the inside of your left knee. I've got mine on my highest height. You can have yours low. And can you come sideways and put your left temple on your fingers like you're contemplating things? What things to contemplate today? Take the right hand, if you can, to the back of the skull. And if that's just too much uh, for the neck and for the shoulder, you can put your right fingers on your, the top of your shoulder. That's cool. So I think I'm going to start there. Pull the right elbow backward. Can you feel your chest turn to the right? Good. Once you feel that turn of the chest, gently nudge the block against the left inner knee. And then watch the right hand if you can. And lengthen it over the right, sorry, the left leg. So the right arm goes over the left leg. That's it. The right elbow though stays somewhat soft so that it can pull up toward the ceiling and back toward the wall where your butt is. That's it. Now there's so much to do here. Push through your right heel. Heavy your tailbones, zipper up your front body. Yes. And then just be there and try to really connect with the breath. Yeah, really. I almost, I don't want to say dangle the wrist, but don't let the wrist be hard. Can you push down on your calf muscles a little bit more? Can you push down on the backs of your heels? And then feel like I could be there with you at home and pull you up by your right elbow. Now hang, turn the right elbow forward a little bit. That'll bring you back to center. Just pause for a second. Gather the hands together. Take your thumbs to any place on your sternum. As you lift your breastbone up, see if you can feel your tailbone drop. So quite often I give you the cue the opposite way, heavy the tailbone to lift the breastbone. This time you're lifting the breastbone to see if that helps you understand that your butt gets heavier. Do you guys feel that? Good. Now slide the block over. And by the way, if anybody's struggling with this, you can double stack. Why not? <laughs> Come down. Oh, you're just contemplating things. Contemplating. Push out through the left leg. And one thing to be mindful of, everybody, I haven't talked a lot about the buttock bones, but you don't want to be forward of them. You want to feel like you are on the center of your butt. Take your left hand either, let's go to the shoulder first. Just see how that feels. And then maybe the back of the skull. Yeah, my neck doesn't like it when I go to the back of the skull. So this time, lift the left elbow up toward the ceiling. Yeah, and feel like it's being wenched upward. And then take the left elbow toward the right toes. Uh-huh. So can my elbow move a little bit differently on this side? And then maybe you take the arm overhead. 
If you take the arm overhead though, you guys, you've got to very quickly counterbalance your weight so you're not so heavy over the right. That's it. God, Joyce, you look great. So do you, Peter. Awesome. Let's see, Trisha, same light coming in. Yes, I see it. That's it. Now, see if you can lean back, everybody, onto your tailbone. Anchor the tailbone. That's it, Michelle. Anchor the tailbone more. Heavy it. Yes, you'll get longer if you can heavy your tailbone. But now ask yourself, am I pushing just a little bit too much? It's a weird thing, yoga. You know, sometimes it feels so good you want to do more. But that's a good time to stop. It's like having one more scoop of Ben and Jerry's. It's like, ah, oh, no, I had enough. You take that one more scoop and it's like it's over. Now, elbow. Elbow's going to pull you up. Elbow pulls you up. Elbow pulls you up. Awesome. Take the blocks, everybody. Put them by your hips. Gather the two legs together. I was teaching this uh, in yesterday's class, and the gals that were here were so confused by it. I think I'll teach it again. All right, so you need to have your fingers on. My fingers don't easily go to the floor. If yours do, go for it, but I'm gonna use blocks. Pull your right elbow back and press your left elbow forward. Now, if you look at your feet, ideally, your left foot went forward and your right foot pulled back. And if they didn't, if they didn't, it's fine. But you wanna start asking yourself, wow, why doesn't my pelvis move with my shoulders? Bring both elbows back to the beginning. Now you're kind of clued in, so watch your feet. As your right elbow moves forward and your left elbow pulls back, does your left leg come behind your right? It does it when you're lying down at 90 degrees. Why wouldn't it do it here? Hmm, I don't know, we say to ourselves. Pull the elbows back to the beginning. Let's do it one more time. Right elbow pulls back. Left elbow goes forward. See if you can feel that your chest turns right. Right elbow, left elbow come back. You want to pause in the middle. The brain needs just a second to coordinate that with the body. The left elbow pulls back. The right elbow pulls forward. Are my feet connected to this movement? And then pull both elbows back. Beautiful. Everybody lean back a little bit. Cross one shin in front of the other. With your hands, uh, let's turn the blocks up a level. Turn them one up. Good. Push down with the heels of the hands and just lift your butt. I, it's probably hard to see me at home, but my butt's off the mat. Just wiggle side to side. That's it. And then slowly lower the buttocks down. Okay. As you lower the buttocks down, ask yourself, am I on the center of the buttocks? And do I want to put a block in my lap? If you don't, that's cool. Just make sure that it's the palms of the hands that are turned up toward the ceiling. So in this pose, the seated pose, the inner thighs are moving away from the center of your body. And so are your shoulders. So your collarbones are becoming broader. Drag the elbow tips down. See if that pulls the gaze of the eyes down. So I always say to our teachers, and so does Michelle when we're training teachers, you don't really want to have to tell someone, lower your eyes. You want to help them figure out how the body lowers the eyes naturally. You pull the elbows down. The gaze tends to drift toward the nose. Now just pause with the eyes closed. So we have people, uh, Trisha and Peter in Maine. Uh, everyone else is close around Sarasota. But how amazing that we can all sit here, united together, yoked together through this practice. Feeling the gift of our breath as it moves in and as it moves out, accepting our lives and our current circumstances as they are. Doesn't mean we can't change them, everybody, but the starting point is acceptance. You don't even have to like things to accept them. Nothing wrong with Zoom. We're just going to sit together for a few seconds longer. 
please make sure that the neck is not rigid. The head should be able to bobble or wobble. I've been playing around with the elbows all week and I'm noticing that when I'm really thinking, and especially if I'm thinking about something negative or what my mind perceives as negative, that's when there's so much tension in the neck and in the throat. So you can use the different um, levels of tension in your body to help you clue in to what's going on in your mind. When you're ready, everybody, gather the hands again. Let there be some space between the palms. And then pull the elbows backward and drop them downward. That'll lift your breastbone. And then if you lean back a little bit, your back broadens and your head can lower. While our practice focused a lot this morning on the shoulders, the collarbones, the neck, uh, we're gonna finish class with a supported Shavasana. So take your time coming out of the seated pose. If you have a bolster at home, just wedge that behind your knees. If you're sans bolster without, uh, roll your blanket really tightly and put your bolster or your blanket, oh, about a foot to a foot and a half, depending on how tall you are from your mat and let the backs of the knees or the backs of the thighs, everybody drape onto the prop. Yeah. And then as you lie back, if you happen to have an extra blanket at home, you can put that behind your head. And just lie there for a moment, turning your head two inches to the right. Two inches is not very much. And then come back to center and turn the head two inches to the left. Hopefully things in and around the neck feel a little looser this morning. If you haven't done so already, close your eyes. And ask yourself, what are, how did I choose? Because it really is a choice. How did I choose to organize my arms? Am I putting them in external rotation, internal rotation, maybe somewhere in between? Welcome the sound of your breath. And so talking about accepting what is, he writes, acceptance is not resignation. It is an opening to possibility. And openness is the basis for a skillful response to life. To be human is much more than being born, getting an education, finding the right partner, and getting a pretty house on a nice street, just so that you can sleep, wake, work, go to bed, and do it all over again. It is an invitation to feel everything, to come into direct contact with the strange, beautiful, horrible, and often perfectly ordinary thing we call life. It is an opportunity to be conscious of the fact that some of us will make love while others make war. To recognize the truth that there are babies like my granddaughter born into loving arms and caressed by a mother who kisses her bright future into her child's cheeks. And there are babies like Caroline a woman I knew many years ago whose parents left her in a dumpster. To embrace the night screams in refugee camps and the giggling of children in living rooms under tents made of couch pillows and bed sheets. 
Yes, there is both devastation and hopelessness. And there is passion and holy commitment to creating a better future for everyone. There is me writing and you reading and the separation between us. And there is the unity we feel almost immediately when we are reminded that there is love. He teased that paragraph up for the chapter I was telling you all about where he talks about uh, suffering and leaning into the things that we don't like. But this beautiful reminder that it's, it's all there. There's the poverty and the wealth. There's the conservative point of view and there's the liberal point of view. And in the end, how blessed are we that we get to bear witness to it all. somewhat mindful, everyone, of your neck and shoulders as you consider moving, not moving to Atlanta, <laughs> just moving back to the front of your yoga mat. And again, consider, do I want to put a block in my lap? Would I like to lie here a few more minutes? Uh, you know, my favorite story is about how uh, Ed was telling me that he falls asleep quite often in Shavasana and his wife comes by an hour later and is like, I know, I just know that uh, class has been over for a while. So, you know, if you're at home and you want to linger there, do it. It's kind of that day, kind of day to day. But in the meantime, everyone, as you sit here, whenever the shoulders are dragged down by the elbows, we have a much better chance of relaxing the neck. Can you feel the rootedness of the tailbone? The outer hips drop toward the floor. You're not having to sit up straight, you're simply allowing the body to be as it is. I hope that our practice this morning uh, not only brought some awareness, but definitely loosened the neck. Sometimes it doesn't though. <laughs> and that can always be an interesting uh, exercise to notice. Wow, wow, not even moving my elbow loosened up what's going on in my neck. Back to the reading for a moment, accepting things as they are. Another one of my favorite authors, uh, Michael Singer, uh, said when I was listening to him earlier this week that he has a mantra. I'd rather be happy than have things be the way I want them to be. And implicit in that is accepting things as they are and pushing nothing away. Thank you so much, everybody, for coming along with me this morning. Namaste. Mm -hmm.